Hi, welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner with Andy and Nicole. Um, the question I get more often than uh, than any here over the last, oh, the second quarter here. We just finished up the second quarter. Uh, we pretty much gave back all the profits from the first quarter, and now we're seeing we went from all-time highs to to really uh, uh, a significant drop, and a lot of people wanted to know the reasons why. <music> first uh, correction that I said was well over uh, overdue was was really the the weak hands sold their positions and uh, it was about a 10% drop but here as we start out um, there's several other factors that happen actually five or six of them one was the mining uh, and the regulation of Chinese government and mining operations which affected the hash rate to you know around 25% and there's a very compelling um, correlation between price or value of Bitcoin and hash rate. So um, a lot of people are angry at this. Um, it, it, to me, it's it's a necessity. I think it's a it's a good thing. Its silver lining is um, we're now able to have more of a decentralized mining um, operation that'll move to the Western world out of China. So when I look at the long term, I think it's uh, I think it's It'll be very beneficial for the survival uh, of cryptocurrency in and of itself. So, yeah, um, that was one of the factors. And then the second factor, uh, the media. A lot of uh, the weak hands that come in, uh, every time you see, uh, you know, Bitcoin's crashing, Bitcoin this, regulation on Bitcoin, um, ETFs being delayed till I think they're going to make a determination in August. And people see this on mass media, see it on TV and... Uh, they look at a crash, so negativity really draws, uh, attracts negativity, and th that's what the media is all about. Um, when you really look at the underlying principles and what it does, it's still there. It's all about freedom. It's all about uh, we, the people, having and owning, maintaining our own uh, currency. And once the media starts with the, the negativity, of course, FUD and fear and uncertainty and all those things come into play, and that's why you saw the massive sell-off. But that wasn't the biggest contributor to the drop, in my opinion, because it's very difficult for new people to really understand, get in and out of markets. Typically, new people come in, they buy, they hold. You had the whales for the first time. You saw some, some addresses that have been lying dormant for years uh, come active, and we, we could see Bitcoin outflows from some of the whales. So anytime you have any asset um, that is controlled by the few, whether it's whales or whether it be Chinese miners, it, it all has kind of the same amount. Whenever you have an entity or similar entities that control any asset uh, to the point where they can manipulate it or move the price, it's not a healthy ecosystem. Remember, for cryptocurrency in general to succeed, it needs to be decentralized. So um, what do we have? We talked about um, the miners, we talked about the media, we talked about the FUD, we talked about the whales. But the biggest thing that I think, and we're going to see more of it, and I'm not an advocate of it, I'm hoping here in the United States, even though uh, I finally made it back up here to Canada, just made it through my 14-day quarantine, so happy Canada Day for all of my Canadian followers and friends. It's great to be back up here, great to be back home. Um, so, but I think the biggest thing is the institutions and the bots. Now, let's talk about institutional money. Right now, institutional money is really funny money floating around. The M1 supply being the highest it's ever been, I think most assets are in a bubble. So, when I talk about institutional money, yes, it's great. It's great for expansion, but again, it's when too few many people own too much of said asset, um, that's why you always got to follow dominance as an investor. When you look at dominance of Bitcoin against altcoins, same thing applies with institutional uh, monies. Uh, there's probably no less than, oh, I think the last time I looked at it about six weeks ago, 12, 1300 different entities that are building smart contracts. So it's growing, um, but it can be dangerous too because most professional traders, institutions deploy these bots. And bots are great if you want to make money. 
It's not great if you want to sustain something for a long period of time, in my opinion. Um, I think bots can be dangerous because bots are efficient because they're programmed in such a way that they look for maximums and different buying and or selling um, of said coins to maximize profits. Well, with that said, um, they all kind of run on the same program or algorithm or og operating system or whatever you want to call it. So the snowball effect happens when all the bots trigger the stop loss, meaning maybe they've got a 10%, 20% or uh, trailing stop loss. So when one triggers, they all trigger. And more than likely, the next, um, if you will, group at say 10%, 15%, 20%, it starts that snowball effect where, because they're all programmed similarly, they all have the same stop losses and that's when you get the snowball effect and everything goes to shit real quick. And it, it spirals out of control and now we're seeing all time lows. So now we've got to, we got rid of the weak hands, we broke up the mining, whether you know geopolitically China made the right decision or not, I'm not so sure. Um, but I look at that as liberation and freedom. We really don't need China, to be quite honest with you. And they have their own, you know, reasons that uh, they really don't want Bitcoin to succeed. Uh, they got their own cryptocurrency that they just gave away. I mean, talk about a distribution arm. Just give it away to the people. And now you're starting to see it in, you know, El Salvador and all these different places where they're just going to give, well, give the coins away. So... Uh, a lot's happened here this year. Um, a lot of things we didn't see coming. Um, a lot of things we did see uh, and know. Um, so here we are looking for the bottom. And when we find the bottom and we, we see that, because uh, we're still looking for that parabolic raise here. Um, everything's cyclical. We've had a halving. Now that we're going to consolidate, we've got some of the weak hands out of the way. We're going to decentralize uh, to the west and have more mining operations. Um, I think that's a good, healthy thing. So looking at entry points in, now's a good time. Remember, nothing in principle has changed. This is still, in my opinion, the best um, quote unquote opportunity uh, for the average person that they'll see in their lifetime. I firmly believe that, that the blockchain will dominate this decade and the, and the next decade. We're just getting started into this. So um, unfortunately, some of you had a, a bad experience if you bought in early on the hype because I see it all the time. People are so influenced by uh, third parties or media companies or advertising or, um, you know, when you see Bitcoin all time high and setting new records and, and all these types of things, people, they get stimulated, they get excited and they buy in, but they don't think and know that it's almost an all time high. So they buy during the hype and all the run up but now when Bitcoin's half the price it was, say, 30 days ago, but the news is saying all negativity, they won't buy in. This is the time when you need to build your foundation and start stacking your Bitcoin, start squirreling away now when, the, when it's, at, I'm guessing, close to the bottom. So if our predictions are right or if my studies are right and we look at this thing as parabolics next, well, let's go. We haven't seen the correct indicator yet, but I'll be the first one to do a video on it when it's time. So I just wanted to spend, you know, quick, what, six, seven minutes here and understand what happened in the first and second quarter here with the uh, quote unquote crash or the, you know, 700th death of Bitcoin. All is well um, and we'll support that. And we're going to look at, okay, now that we're at the bottom, what do we get into and why? So next uh, video, we'll probably get into the smart contracts um, and explain those briefly. I know Nicole's done some um, staking videos for Cardano, uh, which is a coin we love, and we'll get into that on the next video as to why. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and look for the um, Cardano staking video from Nicole, and we get into the uh, different wallets and the different staking options. And, um, so that's all I have for now. Uh, happy Canadian Day for all of you uh, Canadians out there, and we'll talk real soon.